In the previous videos, we have discussed about the principles of superpositions where the total stress developed within a member will be the summations of the axial compressions, bending and eccentricity depending on their existence at a specific location of the member. For a typical pre-stressed concrete beam subjected to symmetrical load, there will be at least two critical locations to be analyzed. One at the mid-bank, another at the support. Within a cross-section, normally we look at the stress for the top and the bottom of the beam as they normally represent the most critical situations within the section. It was also mentioned that different locations of the pre-stressing load will lead to different outcomes in terms of the total stress in the member. And the calculations for the stress will be different for the mid span and also for the support. To analyze the stress developed within the member, first we need to work out the stress diagram in order to come out a series of equations for us to determine the stress in the member. Based on the equation here, we know that the magnitude of pre-stressing force is actually imposing effects onto the stress developing in the member. In short, the positions and magnitude of pre-stressing force will control the stress in order to suppress the tensile stress expected under the working load. The purpose of suppressing this tensile stress during the working load it is so that to reduce the stress or to maintain the stress within the allowable stress limit so that the member does not fail. This slide demonstrates the effects of the positions and magnitude of pre-stressing force onto the member. First, we look at a non-pre-stressed beam. When subjected to the load, the beam will undergo bending. This will lead to the stress diagram something like this. The bottom part of the beam will undergo tensile stress while the top part of the beam will undergo compressive stress. Then when the compression force is applied onto the member, which in this case it is applied along the neutral axis of the section, there will be an axial stress developed within the member. The initial bending stress here will need to be superpositions with the axial compressions in order to obtain the final stress in the member. Based on the principle of superpositions, the summations of the compressive stress will give you two times the compressive stress. As for this, when they cancel each other, it will end up to have no stress in the bottom of the beam. Now let us see what happens when the vertical load is applied at two times. You have two times the weight acting as an external load onto the beam. Your pre-stressing load will maintain as similar. Also along the neutral axis, this will give you an identical axial compression stress. However, due to the two times the load magnitude, the bending stress will double. The superpositions of all the stress here will give you three times the compressive stress. And the summations of the stress here will give you one times the tensile stress. Let us look at another case here. The vertical load now is one time, but the pre-stressing force is not at the neutral axis of the section. It is placed at an offset distance from the neutral axis. 
the compressive force will give you axial compression stress the vertical load will give you bending stress and the eccentricity will give you the effect of eccentricity as the pre-stressing force is applied at below the neutral axis the bending caused by the eccentricity will be totally opposite to the load superimpose all the stresses here you will get the total stress here same goes to bottom of the beam let's say now if we change the situations to have double the load the rest will be totally same as this the stress diagram will be similar except the bending due to the load has been doubled then the total stress developed within the member it will be superpositions of the top and bottom stress of the beam what you see here is the final stress of the beam here and here are actually identical although their setup are totally different this demonstrates how the positions and magnitude of the pre-stressing force can govern the final stress acting on the member all this example has the constant positions of the tendons throughout the member what if the positions of the tendons varies along the member for example this there will be maximum eccentricity at the mid span and no eccentricity at the end span now the load is at two times the load magnitude under such circumstances you will need to check for two locations which are the mid span and also end span the mid span will be contributed by the axial compressions two times the loads causing the bending and also the effect of eccentricity however for the beam at the end span there will be only axial compressions no moment developed at the support therefore you do not have the effect of bending there is no eccentricity at the support as well therefore the effect of eccentricity is not considered the final stress in this section of the support will be the same as the axial compressions in the case that the vertical force is only one times all the stress force are identical to this except that the bending is only one times the magnitude this will end up to have the beam sections in the stress profile such as given here your ultimate goal here is actually to acquire the final stress in the member and check against their limits as long as it is within the acceptable limits the section will pass